Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 5 of season 2 here at Inter Milan. We start with AC Milan uh, in the quote unquote away game playing in the same stadium. Uh, we then have Red Bull Salzburg again in the Champions League. I want payback there. Gave Verona in the league, Lazio in the league, and Galatasaray back in Europe. Now, obviously, our league form has turned around. We're actually looking pretty decent in the league as things stand. In Europe, we are not looking strong after the opening three games. So I'm going to prioritise the group stage of the Champions League with my played games today. And hope that we can get results against Chievo and Lazio with simulated games from the uh, the reserve side. Chalanolu looking like he's going to start on the left. No, we will certainly put Castillejo out there. Andre Silva, certainly put him there. Let's have a look at their midfield. Biglia can maybe play ahead of Bertolacci. Romagnoli at centre-back. Makes sense. They've got an aging Vincent company there as well, but we'll continue with Caldara. And wing-back, Hugo Mayo ahead of Conti. Donnarumma in goal. It was apparently Donnarumma's brother that uh, left AC Milan in the window, as you guys quite rightly told me in the comment section of the previous episode, or one of the previous episodes. Ruben Neves is there available on the bench as well, but we'll leave him on the bench for now. And we shall start with the team looking as it does, and as it has done almost in every single game so far. Right, time for the Milan derby then. But, uh, the there uh, in there to Bruno Fernandes, around the corner to Rabiot. Altaro Martinez making a run, but not really a run I can use at this stage. I'll drop the shoulder, and actually that's worked really well. Rajan and Golan, this should be, and is 1-0. Goal line technology may well have been needed there, but it looked visually as if it was clear to the eye that it had crossed the line. We'll have a look at a replay to see just how far over the line it went. Coming down off the bar, you can see goal line technology is in use. As it freezes here, it's not actually all the way over the line. But it will, I don't know why it freeze frames before the ball moves as far over the line as it's going to, which it does there. That's where it should freeze. As it froze there, it wasn't actually a goal. Thankfully, it did cross the line. And the Belgian Rajan Angolan gives us a 1-0 lead here against AC Milan in the Milan derby at the Giuseppe Miazza. Three points here could send us within a point of Juventus and ahead of Torino if results go our way. It's Biglia. Out wide there to Alex Tellez. Back inside to Paqueta. Forward to Andre Silva. I have to be wary of the runners around me. Suzo will look for the man in the middle. But thankfully Biglia's header goes well wide of the target after 20 minutes. AC Milan trying their best to get themselves back level. But not good enough so far. Rabio swept up wide there to Politano. Now to Nangolan. To Rabio. Forward there to Nicola Pepe. Altaro Martinez. Runners all around me again. We'll look for Pepe. Could look back to Martinez. There's Bruno Fernandes. Good block by Romagnoli. Bruno Fernandes has not been as influential this year as he has been or was in season one. I'm certainly not getting as much out of him in the opening few games of the season in number two as I did throughout the entirety of season number one. But there's still plenty of time for to uh, turn his personal form around. The team haven't necessarily been amazing. What's the betting this flies into the top corner now as I'm talking about his lack of form. Perhaps he's just being unlucky this season. <laughs> Off the woodwork there for the Portuguese after half an hour. There's Andre Silva. Back there to Biglia. To Samu Castillejo. Strike well here and blocked twice by Milan Skriniar. Oh, dear me, that was slightly worrisome. We'll play that through looking for Politano, but Ricardo Rodriguez cuts it up well. We look good value for our 1-0 lead so far in the game. But we'll have to wait and see if we can hold on to it. At least till half-time. If not, past then, till full-time. Forward there to Fernandez. Back to Rajan Angolan. Atara Martinez. Angolan. Fernandez, nicely to Rabio. Taro made a, a weird run, but we'll find Bruno Fernandez. Hits the post again, but this time it goes in. Thank you, Bruno. He's actually playing well, really well in this game. Into two, AC Milan nil, just four minutes into the second half. Nice assist for Lautaro Martinez and a thumping finish.
Politano. In there to Lautaro. Look for Bruno Fernandes. Runners all around me. Nangolin through that gap. Found well. We'll pull that back. And it's a simple, simple, simple third. Adrian Rabio tucks that home. Really nice build up there. Good goal for us. Well put together. AC Milan underperformed last year and finished outside of the European spots. And Rabio right down the middle of the goal there. Ensuring that they're not getting any luck against us in the season number two either. We are the side at the minute. It's Milan nil into three this city is blue and black SDAO inside there to Suzo trying to get themselves a consolation goal here Milan or not just go backwards all right there's the final whistle they were thought they were going to go for a consolation goal there but it just went the wrong way that was pretty straightforward actually at home at home but away although the stats say something else very even with regards to the statistics, but the scoreline, not so. Kind of reminiscent of the game against Napoli, isn't it? Earlier on in the season, where one side was, well, in fact, one side was dominant and the other weren't even at the races, but still managed to come away with a 3-0 victory. Right, up next is the Champions League. And as we mentioned, we are going to put some emphasis on that in this episode. So I'm going to go and play the game midweek here against Salzburg and fingers crossed this time come away with something better than a 3-2 defeat Capo with the delivery Godin heads away Memphis keeps that in play and, and will try and counter and look at the had to rotate the for this game because it came so quickly after the AC Milan one but hoping but as this side were able to see off a team in the last episode, they can do so again today. Lovely ball back. Brozovic's effort. Oh, goes in. Nobody seemed to know where that was going there. Myself included. The keeper just stood and watched. Somehow, Brozovic, I intended for him to head the ball. But somehow, his volleyed finish has flown back across goal into that far top corner. Karamo played into space. Brozovic then darts to the left there, as you see. And with a left footed, well, he's just stretched for it. It's a great finish. Keep it just sprinting back across his goal line. I don't think he could possibly have finished that any better. That's probably one of the most impressive finishes we've ever seen in career mode. Genuinely. Outstanding from Brozovic. 1-0 Inter. Exactly what we needed to start this game. Roof back to Javet, to Yunozovic. Over again, scored their third in the game against them at San Siro in the last episode. Brozovic fighting hard in the midfield, still not able to come away with the ball. And you can see the amount of bodies that Salzburg are flooding the forward areas with here. It's no wonder they're such an offensive threat. They've only got two men back on the halfway line. And Pevlak trying to find a way through. His effort comes in and Lafont can only tip it over. You've got five men in the box there at the end of that move and two more outside. Ball delivered into the middle, headed away by Vecino. Akadi really seemed to lock onto the ball whatsoever there. It's annoying. Yunozovic across to Prevliak. Out to Valti, down the line to Boot. Scored their rather unlikely second in the game yesterday. Here's Valti. Back there to Prevliak again. Boo. Keeping possession well here at Salzburg. They are still behind on the scoreline. It might not be for long. Roof. The teammate, Mina Mino, I think it was with the effort, but well held by Albin Lafont. Sino into Gagliardini. Forward nicely there to Brozovic. Looking for Icardi. Through that gap there's Vecino. He's in. It could be two. It's not. It's a good tackle and then good strength. Oh, but they've given the ball away in a defensive area now. Vecino! Oh! I wasn't far past the post at all. Win that header. Comfortable for Gagliardini. Okay. No need to fall over there, Maro. But never mind. Pass found its target, I suppose. Memphis nicely round there to Dalbert. And Icardi is available in the middle. But the ball isn't... Oh, it was good enough in the end. But only because of a mistake by the defender. Gagliardini, well, why not from distance? That took a deflection off Icardi, I think. No, it was off Romalo. It will be a corner. Brozovic to deliver. Looking for an assist to go with his goal. It's flicked on. It's going to drop here to Gagliardini. Oh, God, that first touch. Dropped to Gallidini. Vecino looking for Caramo, but given away in the end. But then 
Poor possession again from both sides. Nobody really wanting to take advantage of the other's shortcomings in this game so far. Thankfully, we've got ourselves a 1-0 lead already to lean on. But neither side really looking like the quality to run away with this. Black. To Zavet. To Janozovic. Akapo. Roof. Akapo again out wide. Threatening to get an equaliser before half time. Or was that in the box or outside? Think just outside. If you can see the referee point to the spot. We just heard the in game commentator say free kick. Janozovic will deliver. And it's poor. And headed away. We will have our 1 0 lead at half time. Hello. Forward there to Tavert. I uh, see to Mina Mino. Now it was in the second half that we fell apart against Salzburg last time. We were 2-0 up at the break on that occasion at home. We were 1-0 up as we head into this second half here. And again, we find ourselves conceding to Salzburg in the second half. But how is he on his own there? And how has he scored like that at the near post? What is... He was in a great position there, Lafont, and then took a step to open up the gap at the near post. I have been, perhaps on, at times, overly harsh on Alban Lafont, but on occasion, his, oh, his performances do warrant a little bit of criticism. I do not need to fall further behind. A draw keeps us in the fight for the Champions League. Oh, my God. How is Salzburg doing this three time after time again? It's exactly the same as the first game against them. Ahead at half time and behind or conceding two goals at least. Just 15 minutes into the second half. It was to level up last time. It now puts them in front. Apparently Salzburg are my bogey team this year. Unreal. Kovalik. To roof. Ball in. Headed away by Goodin. Corner for Salzburg. They've made a change. Kamar Roof has gone off. I've brought on. Get to that first. Well, I'm Mauro. Mauro, even. I've brought on uh, Bruno Fernandes in the latter stages of this second half, and I'm hoping that his introduction. Oh, come on. Will give us the impetus to push forward and get ourselves victory. I'm going to make another change. I'm going to bring on Rabio for Brozovic. And I'm going to bring on Lautaro Martinez up top as well. Let's see if fresh legs everywhere through the middle will actually help us get back in front. Not level. I need to go in front here, really. I quite believe that this game has gone the way that it has. Here's Bruno Fernandes. That's what we brought him off the bench to do. Pick the ball up. Ah, bollocks too. I'm just going to skip it. 2-2. Two, two. Game on again. 18 minutes to go. He knows a bit. Oh, just out of the reach of the defender. We'll play back here to Chava. Nice tackle by Galliardini. One central midfielder to keep his spot on the field of play. In my three-man midfield, Mina Mino runs into Bruno Fernandes. Dalbert gets that first, but only passes it straight to the Salzburg man. Is Acapo. This is good football from the Austrians. Bergreen turns well, not once but twice. Rabio intercepts though. Here's Martinez out to Caramo. Come on. Oh, this could be the moment. Lautaro Martinez racing away off the bench here. It's got to be a penalty and is given as such. Shouldn't be a red card because I think there are other defenders there around on support and indeed the referee gives the yellow. Now, I missed my last penalty. In a game against Salzburg to score a third goal. It would have been 3-0 on that occasion. This would be to make it 3-2 here. I'm going to say down the middle and in the last minute move left. A penalty scored against the AI. We're 3-2 in front against Salzburg this time. Minamino down the line to Junozovic. Space for the cross, cleared away by Bauer, only as far as Godin, it cannons off his chest, he can't get to it first, now he's out of position, Who to a man whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce, Jabba across here to Bergreen, runs into a teammate, can Bauer get to that first, he's trying his hardest, just oh, do something, get rid of that please, Diego wins that well, time run out here now, surely, 
for our hosts. Lautaro Martinez will dink that over the top, looking for the run of Memphis to play. It won't reach him, but ref. Oh, I finally did it. Scored a penalty against the AI, and on this occasion, it's enough to win us the game. That was the biggest victory of the entire season so far. 2-0 up at half-time in the first game against Salzburg. Lose 3-2. 1-0 up at half-time of the second game against Salzburg. 15 minutes into the second half, find ourselves 2-1 behind. Do still come away with the victory. Oh, it was massive. Absolutely huge. And with two games to go in the Champions League group stage, we are still in with a shout of knockout football. With four points behind Juventus at the top of the Serie A table. Torino and Lazio hot on our heels. With Lazio in the next game. DeMarco seems certain that he wants to stay at the club. I've accepted offer after offer after offer for him. He will not agree contract terms with anyone else. And now he's coming to me saying, Could I play the first team, please? No, go away. Nicola Pepe gives us a 1-0 lead against Chievo Verona in the 14th minute from the penalty spot. Perhaps off... Uh, literally, as I'm saying, perhaps our fortunes have turned with regards penalties. Icardi then misses one. Scores from open play, though. So at least he's done that. A 2-0 lead, a 2-0 win against Chievo Verona. It's Lazio next. We'll be simming that one as well. And then the game against Galatasaray, we shall play at the end of the month to hopefully put ourselves back in the top two in the Champions League group stage. I'm relying on Atletico Madrid to this time beat Salzburg after drawing in Austria. I want them to win at home. But, oh my God, DeMarco sold. Everything's, everything's going the way that we didn't expect it to. We finally did that as well. I must have accepted upwards of seven or eight bids for him throughout the course of this season, DeMarco. And at last, he's actually agreed to go to someone else. Time and time again, I tried to throw him out the door and he kept holding on to the door frame, refusing to leave. He's gone at last. It's only for a minimal fee, but just wanted him out of the way. Right, Lazio away from home. We shall simulate this. Putting our emphasis on the Champions League games. Hopefully, oh, thank you. Nicola Pepe, after two minutes, I thought for a minute, Savic had scored. But no, it's a yellow card for him after 60 seconds of Pepe, maybe from a resulting free kick. Who knows? Giving us a 1-0 lead. And as we approach half-time, that is still intact. David Luiz picking up a second yellow card for them. Slow, oh, and then a missed penalty for Jonas, the Brazilian striker. 20 minutes to go. 1-0 still intact. 10 minutes to go. The same scenario. Final whistle. Three points. Thank you very much indeed. It's Champions League time again. We aren't yet up into that second spot, I don't believe. No, a point behind Red Bull Salzburg. Galatasaray have lost every Champions League game so far. Let's keep that going. Desperately important Champions League games in today's episode and hopefully we can end on a high. Although Lautaro Martinez is going to need a better first touch than that if we're to get victory in this third and final game. Get it forward to him again there to a small way than the other. Lay it to Nangolan who can fire. We'll take the corner. Starting Memphis on the right hand side over Politano in this one. Just to see if we can get a little bit more out of Memphis that we haven't yet even though he's played a bit part role this season. I haven't yet seen the best of him. That shot from Fernandez is going to be gobbled up by Fernando Muslera. It's a positive start, but not an effective start. Fernandez for there to Nangolan. Memphis has made the run and will find him well. Marcao, nice turn by Memphis. Dink that in, knock it down, volley that first time. Oh, it clipped the bar. I felt my controller shake. If that flies top bins, it's a wonderful goal. He struck it beautifully on target until the very last moment and tip of the bar and over. If that had gone into the top corner, that would have been incredible. Small forward, Testimir down the left-hand side. Early cross, headed away by De Vries, but only as far as Belhanda again. Bruno Fernandes not necessarily got the best when it comes to tackling stats. Lafont punches that really well, actually. Who's going to win that foot race? It's going to be Lautaro that gets there first. We'll look to get away from Fernando if we can, which we can't. 
brilliantly defended by the Brazilian. Finds the Brazilian teammate who finds an Algerian one and plays a 1 2 with him. Lovely movement here by Galatasaray, and that's tamely into the side netting by Irma Bayram. As we approach half time, it's still 0 0 here. Galatasaray really dominating possession of the football, though, as you can tell from those stats top left. Certainly need to be using the ball better. The draw here isn't the end of the world with regards to our European campaign. I think he's just offside there, Lautaro, and he was. The draw isn't the end of the world, but a win would go a long way to getting us through towards the knockout stages after shortcomings in the first few games of this group stage. We have to hope that Atletico can beat Salzburg in the other game on this fifth match day and that we can get victory here against Galatasaray. And I was just about to pull the trigger there with Nicola Pepe to try and find the far corner. And the referees pointed to the spot. And then it was a penalty in the game against Salzburg that gave us victory there. Are we about to get victory here via the same method? Perhaps. 1-0 up in stoppage time at the end of the first half. It's Galatasaray nil into one. Now, depending on the other result, we'll find out momentarily, hopefully, what the score is between Atleti and Salzburg. There's the half-time whistle. Hopefully, the games are being played at the same time. We should find out. Atleti are 1-0 up. This, as it stands, would move us into second place in the group and our fate would be in our own hands. Let's hope things stay the same. And have a lovely ball down the line to Fernando there. There's plenty in the middle, but Aurier is there too. Memphis's touch takes it straight to Emre, but Emre's touch takes it straight to Memphis. I'll poke that looking for Lautaro. Bruno Fernandes will hopefully keep his run going. Memphis is found again out wide. Not many options in the middle, but Lautaro's in a decent position. Pepe arriving! He gets right underneath it. If he heads that down... It's a lovely run. If he heads that down... It's almost certainly a second goal. Unfortunately, it's gone directly boing into the sky. Nice tackle by Rabiot. An Angola with a number of options. One of which is Fernandes who loses possession again. And then wins it back again. Quickly across here to Memphis. Memphis Depay doesn't score the second goal. A good save by Fernando Muslera. Nicola Pepe. Cross in with his weak foot. Could still find Memphis. Nods it back across. Rabio off the bar. I'm going to knock this back to an Angolan if I can. I mean, the defender did it for me. But that sat up nicely. But poor connection from the Belgian. And we'll stay just 1-0 in front with 25 minutes to go. Good header by Rabio. Could immediately have another opportunity, perhaps. Memphis could go again. Lautaro will find Bruno. Who finds Nicola Pepe. Who draws the save out the keeper. Memphis can't get there. Emery puts it behind for a corner. They're making a change. I won't. We'll stick with the 11 we've got on the field and hope that it's enough. Nangolu will nod that down to a teammate. Memphis to Skriniar. Oh, that's terrible from Milan Skriniar. Absolutely woeful pass. Corner for Galatasaray taking short. Headed away by Rabiot. Lautaro should get to this first one and nod that down to a teammate and does well. And if Nanis just has to hold on to that and he's done brilliantly to ensure that he does. Just slow up with Tellez. There's Rabio Inside there to Nangolan. I have a number of players to aim for here. Fernandez will poke that at the right time to Memphis Depay. Going to have to turn back and look for support. I see Politano on the far side, but I can't find him. Been quite ineffective on the counter-attack in this game. Really struggled to uh, make the Galatasaray backline pay for having less numbers back there. I had so many grey shirts flooding forward there, and I still wasn't able to make the numerical advantage pay. Thankfully, we still have a numerical advantage on the scoreline. And if things have stayed the same at the Metropol Metropolitano, we'll have a numerical advantage point-wise over Red Bull Salzburg as well by the end of this fixture. Right at the end of stoppage time now. Galatasaray on course at present to lose five of five in the group stage of the Champions League. But I am going to have to keep them out here. And Skriniar is going to do that. And they have lost 5 of 5 now. Galatasaray in the Champions League group stage. Hard fought victory away from home in Turkey. But victory nonetheless. And Atleti extended their advantage over Salzburg. A 2-0 victory. They drew 2-2 back in Austria. So Atleti having to come back against Salzburg after they performed well against them previously. As we did. We went from defeat to victory. They went from draw to victory. And that really puts us in a strong position now in the Champions League group. All we need to do, I think, is avoid defeat against um, 
against Atleti and we'll be through. If we can beat Atleti, we might be able to steal top of the group. I'm not sure. We'll have a quick look actually and see what the Champions League group looks like. The Premier League, the Premier League. The Italian league table still sees us a point behind Juventus, although Torino are trying to hang on in there. Milan aren't too far behind either. Lazio and Roma, as well as Fiorentina, actually locked on 20 points. So the battle for top four is going strong. Battle for the title is seemingly a two two horse race again this year, but we'll wait and see if anyone else can close the gap between now and the end of the season. And the Champions League group hopefully sees us strong in second. It's not strong. Atleti already guaranteed top spot, actually. But a point, a point against Atleti should be enough to see us through. A point should be enough. But a win would guarantee it, obviously. But I don't know, because we lost 3-2 to Salzburg and won 3-2 against Salzburg. And they're going to have to beat Galatasaray, so their goal difference will improve to a minimum of zero, which is what ours is and would be if we drew. So actually... A point might not be enough. Because if Salzburg beat Galatasaray, as we'd expect them to, then they would have at least the same goal difference as us, if not better. If we do have the same goal difference, we both beat, beat each other 3-2. So then it would be on goal scored. And at present, Salzburg have scored more than us as well. So it really is going to be touch and go in that final Champions League weekend. It's going to be a real dramatic final match day. We've Agleti at home. To end is at home, isn't it? Yes, Atleti at home on the final match day to try and seal that out. With Benevento, Udinese, Perugia and Hellas Verona as well in the remainder of December. And then we've the January transfer window to think about where we will be replacing Mauro Icardi. So there's a lot going on tomorrow. Do make sure you subscribe to the channel to be sure you don't miss it. Drop the video a like as well if you enjoyed. And I will see you in that big one tomorrow. See you later.